This episode of Learning As We Go starts with a story. There was a time I really wanted a Commodore 64. So there came a day I decided to just go with it and click buy it now. A couple of days later it arrived. Excited as I was, I ran to the door to get a look at my first Commodore 64. I couldn't wait to hook it up to a television and see that blue basic for the first time. So there it was, the Commodore 64C. Warning, dramatic acting ahead. So it was time to unbox or unwrap my Commodore 64. I had my crappy CRT ready to go. I gave my Commodore 64 a quick look and it was in decent but not good shape. It had a few scuffs on the bottom and it was missing two of its feet. So, I plugged in the RF connector. Plugged in the power and turned it on. I could see the power light had turned on, but on the television nothing showed up. As I guess everybody would have done, I specced the CRT a few times. The next troubleshooting step was to turn the power on and off again. But nothing happened. So I hope by now you have a feeling where this story is going. In my life I had never hooked up a computer using RF. I had never even heard of it. So I was born in the year 2000. 16 years after this aired on television. A day in the life of a Commodore 64. In my time, television looked like this. PlayStation 2 went on sale at midnight, but only 100... It's The Sims! Diablo 2. Play it now on PC and Macintosh. Rated M for Mature. Good conditions in anticipation of tomorrow's PlayStation 3 launch. It marks a new era in gaming with lifelike graphics... So yeah, my time consisted of plug-and-play consoles. That tiger, that tiger, like these. So yeah, being used to HDMI and SCART and occasionally composite with the PlayStation 2, I never even thought about searching for a Channel 3 or a Channel 4 until I found a video of someone showing you how to do it. A very obscure video though. Someone filming it with their iPhone, I think, very badly lit and everything. So I decided that some people like me, born after the year 2000 or just straight up amateurs like me would have some benefit to a video showing you how to connect the Commodore 64. So here's the Commodore 64. We have the cartridge slot. Or no, it's a memory expansion. And there we have the RF connector. It's somewhat like a composite uh, output. In the jack is the same. RCA jack. We have a video port where you can hook up the composite serial cassette deck and a user port. So yeah, I think RF is one of those things you need to know and then the whole world opens up for you because I had an MS6 lying around which I also thought, well, it has no video output, it's broken or something. Okay, let's begin by putting in the RCA to RF connector. So the RCA jack goes into the Commodore 64. That's easy. First, 
let's take a look at the television we're gonna use. It's this Sharp CRT. You can see all the information on the back here. It's just a simple television I got for like seven bucks at a thrift store. It comes with two connectors in the back. You can see the RF jack and a basic European SCART. On this side you plug in the RF connector. Also quite logical. After putting in the power, you turn on the Commodore 64. So the LED is on, and then in the television you search for the menu. In this case we go to the menu that says PR, and you select it. This menu is very easy. As you can see here we have UHF, and if you select around you can change a lot of things. But still the basic things, like the band UHF, or uh, you can skip, you can fine tune, and all sorts of things. But the most easy thing is just to select auto and then let it search. So now the television is searching for all the available frequencies. And then after searching for a minute or two, the wonderful blue basic screen appears. The first time doing this I realized that my other computers that used RF weren't broken. For instance the Commodore 64 I showed you in the beginning of the video. And this will also work, of course, with modern televisions that still have an RF jack. For instance, this Samsung monitor slash television I have. In this one you just go to the channel menu and then you select auto search. Then you select cable and then you go to the analog. Then, like the old CRT, it will automatically look for all the available frequencies and eventually connect to the Commodore 64. So yeah, there it is, a simple explanation on RF, not for the people that are already familiar with it, of course, just for retro fans like me a couple of years ago that want to hook up their Commodore 64 to an RF connection for the first time. Thanks for watching, learning as we go, hope to see you next time.